Hello folks. In this video, we're going to look at macros in SampleWrench. So Wrench has a full function macro language, and this allows you to automate repetitive tasks. You can create alternate uh, user interfaces for functions. You can even create your own custom functions. So let's take a look at how this all works. We're going to dive into all of those things. First, I'm going to call up our favorite fire sign quote, and I'll just play this real quick like. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Right, so that's our baseline. Now, suppose there's a series of things we need to do. Right, we, we do it a lot. I'm just going to grab uh, three things sort of at random. Um, but, you know, there, there could be a series of things that you often do in terms of maybe uh, normalizing a sound sample, doing some EQ, a certain kind of an effect, whatever it is. But you find yourself doing it multiple times. Or you need to do it, the same thing, on several different samples in a, in a big batch process. So we'll just come up with a few things, right? So what I'm going to do first off is come up to the Setup menu and go to Macros. And what I want to do in this case is an auto-record. This is the easiest thing. You can write your own from scratch, but generally auto-record is sort of a nice place to start for, for your basic kinds of, of batch processes. And once you get you know, good at this and there's full documentation, there's actually a separate document on the enable language itself, but in the um, regular PDF file, you will find information on the specialized wrench functions, the macro functions. All right, so anyway, we're going to grab auto record over here, and I'm just going to give this a name, a macro. Uh, I don't know, let's call it B macro. I'm just going to stick this on the um, desktop just because it's easy. Now, optionally, I can immediately assign this to one of my function buttons. In my case, I'm just going to stick this on F2, you know, why not? Save that. Now we just go through the series of things we need to do. So in our case, what I'm going to do um, is come up and do some equalization first. I'm going to grab some filters, and I'm going to um, look at the telephone eyes. Right? There's all kinds of things we can do, but I'm, I'm going to make this sort of um, uh, sound like it's coming through a telephone. Right? I'm going to alter some of these. I'm going to make this a fifth order filter. Maybe we'll crank up uh, this bottom frequency to maybe, oh, I don't know, uh, let's, let's do 320 hertz, okay? Really chop the bottom end off like your phone would. Just run that. All right, you can see how much energy has been ripped out of here. Now, for fun, let's go and do uh, maybe a pitch shift. You know, sharp, flat, what do you want to do? Um, I don't know, let's make it, uh, let's, let's be kind of daring here. I'm going to shift this down, uh, three semitones, three semitones flat. Alrighty. Now maybe I want to do a normalize, right? Get the peaks up here a little bit. Maybe not hundred percent, but you know, maybe 90%. You know, that might be pretty good. So, um, we'll just go over here and grab normalize. Remember on normalize, this will set what the peak value is going to be, right? hundred percent is maximized basically. And then we go from there. So I'm just going to set this up around 90-ish percent, 89 percent, close enough. And we get a little bit more gain out of it. All right. Okay. And finally, what I'm going to do is just play it so I can monitor, you know, what I, what I just did, that series of things. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? All right. So we could, we could hear that telephone quality. We could hear the, the pitch going down, all of that. All right. So I'm done. That's my, my little batch process, my little um, macro setup. So come back to macros. Notice the, the start is now a stop. So turn it off. That's all done. Now what I'm going to do is undo the three things, the three processes we just did. So here's our original sound. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? And now I'm going to call up the macro. So remember, we assigned that to F2. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hit my F2 key. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Right, so it did all those things, including the playback. 
right? So whatever you did, boom, it does all of those things in sequence. And there you go. Okay, beautiful. I can bring back my original. Now, you might want to see what this, in fact, looks like, right? You know, what does the macro itself look like? So I'm going to call up the macro file. I'm just going to load it into uh, Notepad so that you can see what it looks like. And here we go. Here's our little macro all written out for you. So this is just the beginning of the macro. And then we have a series of sort of built-in functions. Um, notice what we did, right? Here's the EQ low pass filter, EQ high pass filter, because even though that's one thing in the filters function, it's actually two separate calls so that you could do them individually if you wanted to rather than one. Here's a pitch shift function that we called, the normalize function, and then the play. So what you will notice on all of these is the number one first, right? There's a series of arguments on each of these, and it'll vary on the function. But the very first thing is the number of the um, editor. So the editor that we were using right down here, right, it was number one. So this is number one. So you can customize this to whatever editor happens to be open. If you put a zero in here, then it'll work for whichever editor is currently active, whichever one is highlighted. All right, so zero is sort of like the default guy that you're working on. But you can fine tune this because you could have different editors doing different things. So you can, like I said, have it set up so it doesn't inadvertently do a function on uh, a sound that you don't want operated on. All right, then we have the arguments. So the low pass, you might re recall, was at 3000 hertz, and it was a fifth order filter, so 3005. The high pass was 320 hertz, and it was also a fifth order filter. The pitch shift was shifting down, negative, 299 cents, right? Three semitones. The zero and zero over here were the other options that we had. There's a, a, a stereo tracking, which we didn't need because it was a mono sound and also an extended bass frequency content, which we didn't have, so we could set those both to zero, so they show up here. Uh, normalize, okay, so that's uh, minus a dB basically right there. So um, we're, we're looking at, uh, you know, that 90, 90%. And then of course the play um, was just that one, that one single editor window that was open, right? Editor number one. Okay. Let's bring back our a uh, little window over here. Now there are other things that we can do here. Um, I've already loaded up a couple of different macros in here just to show you. So um, for example, we have an alternate interface. So this little thing um, is just a second order high pass filter and all you do is put in the frequency you want. Right. So this shows that, yeah, you can, you can do this. You can set up a little, make your own little dialog log box with buttons and in, input slots and things like this. All right. So this one isn't too bad to do. As a matter of fact, I'll uh, bring up that guy in just a sec. And here we go. So this is the script that does that. This is a little bit different because it has a section over here to actually create the dialog box itself. So, you know, there's appropriate text and input buttons, an OK button, a cancel button, and so on and so forth. Um, there's a, an initial default value over here. That was the 95 hertz that we saw. And, and basically, when you run this thing, it puts that up and it just waits for the user to type in stuff and finally hit the OK or cancel button. And if they do hit the OK button, then it just goes, um, takes the value from uh, that little input text box turns it into a, a floating point number and then you know, calls the high pass function that we saw uh, in the preceding example. All right. Okay, pretty cool. Let's get rid of this. Now, something a little bit more complicated. All right, so this has little radio style buttons. You have three things you can select. This is a pre-echo generator. So this is a custom function. This actually goes in and at a sample level manipulates individual sample points. 
And essentially what it does is it creates an echo that occurs before the sound itself, right? That's kind of a unique sort of thing. It's an interesting sort of effect. And it gives you three options, right? A 50 millisecond, a 75 or 100 millisecond sort of pre-delay, right? So you'll see sound over here, all right? So I'm just gonna run this. And you can see that some things were added and we can just play it. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Right? Kind of an interesting little effect. And that just shows how far you can take this, um, you know, what the potentials are. So you can, like I said, just use this to uh, automate sort of repetitive tasks, or you can really go overboard with it and create your own DSP functions. Things can get really, really interesting. All right. Give it a shot for yourself. Have some fun with it.